Hi, I'm Blake from Best Top Engineering. I'm here today to walk you through the installation and operation of the all-new Trek Top NX Fly, a full convertible soft top with fastback styling. Today we're going to be installing this on a four-door JK Wrangler. There are some differences between the four-door and the two-door, but you should be able to follow along, and I'll point out the differences as we go. Right when you open the box, this bag is the first thing you should look for. Inside is all of the hardware you're going to need to install the top and the installation instructions that'll help walk you through. This is the installation instruction booklet. Before we get started, it's a good idea to read through this and familiarize yourself with what we're going to do. Right here on the front page, this shows you what tools you're going to need for the install, about how long it will take, the skill level, and how to contact customer service in case you need more help. If you flip through the next couple of pages, you'll see that we've laid out all of the hardware and pieces for this top. Next, I'll be going through and showing you how to identify some of the major components. Let's start with the door rails. On the four-door, there's a front and a rear door rail for each side. Here we have a rear door rail, and you can tell that it's the rear because it's a two-piece design that unfolds. On the two doors, you only have one door rail. There is no front or rear. Now, this is the left-hand side of the vehicle, which you can easily identify by looking for the marks on the mold on both pieces that say left hand and right hand. Here we have a front door surround. This one's for the right side of the vehicle, and you can tell that because this piece that sticks out here goes in the front, and there's a marking from the mold down in here that says right hand. These are the two side bows. They're a little difficult to tell which is which here on the table, but when we get to that step of the installation, I'll show you how to orient them correctly. This is the number two bow with attached stay pad straps. The stay pads help support the fabric deck, and the two bow along with the side bows is what pushes your fabric out of the way in the Sunrider position. This is the number three bow assembly. This goes towards the rear of the vehicle in the full bow stack. This is the number four bow assembly. This is the rearmost bow on your Trek Top NX Glide. This is the tailgate bar. It goes on the bottom of your rear window and keeps water out of your Jeep. In section one, step one, you'll be installing the cable guide bracket into the rear door surround. This one is for the right side of the vehicle. You'll need two M5 screws and two M5 lock nuts to install the cable guide bracket into the door surround. When installing the cable guide bracket to the door surround, the screw should come in from the bottom. Once you've got the screw through both the door rail and the cable guide bracket, you'll start your lock nut by hand on both screws. Once you've got those started, you can use your uh, screwdriver with the number two Phillips bit and your adjustable wrench to tighten those screws all the way down. Now that you've tightened both screws, repeat the same steps on the other side of the vehicle. Now we're ready to install the door rails onto the vehicle. Start with the rear door surround by unfolding it and aligning this tab on the bottom of the door surround with the hole on the Jeep's body rail and these holes on the top of the door surround with the holes in the sport bar. Be sure when installing the door rail to make sure that none of the factory rubber seals on the Jeep are folded over. Secure the rear door rail to the body using one of the long mushroom knobs. Once the rear door surround is installed, it's time to move on to the front. Just like on the rear, you're going to align this tab with a matching hole in the sport bar 
and this hole will match up with the hole in the rear door surround. Secure the front door rail to the vehicle using one long mushroom knob and one short mushroom knob. The short mushroom knob goes at the rear. Once you've finished installing the door rails on one side, make sure to repeat the process on the other side. Once the door rails are installed, it's time to install the arch bows. There are two arch bows in this kit, one for the front door surrounds and one for the rear. On the underside of each, there will be a label with a part number and a description of where that arch bow goes on the vehicle. To install the arch bow, first you'll take the bow and set one of the metal feet into the door rail slot on the other side of the vehicle. Holding the other end of the arch bow, push up in the center to allow you to slide the other foot into place. Repeat the same process you used to install the rear arch bow on the front. Now we're ready to install the bow mount brackets. These mount in the same location as the factory soft top brackets, so you won't have to cut your sport bar cover to install them. Find the Velcro flap, open it, and tuck it back underneath the sport bar. Inside, you'll see two threaded holes. Each bow bracket is stamped with a directional arrow in which side of the vehicle it belongs on. To install the bracket, insert one of the bow mount screws, which uses a Torx 30 head, through the hole in the bracket and into the hole on the sport bar. Repeat for the second screw. Repeat on the other side of the vehicle. We're here on step one of section five, and what we're doing is we're removing these two screws in order to install the side bow into the header deck assembly. Now you will have to remove both screws on both sides of the header to complete this step. Remove these and set them aside, you'll need them later. Now that we've removed those two screws, we're ready to install the side bow into the deck header assembly. Earlier I said that these would be hard to tell apart on the table. Here's how you can determine which is which when you're ready to install them. On each side bow, there is a locking block and a tab for the number two bow. When installing the side bow into the deck header assembly, the locking block will go up towards the ceiling with this small tab pointing towards the inside of the vehicle. Insert the side bow into the deck header assembly. Again, the flat part of the tube is towards the inside of the vehicle. This tab for the two bow is facing upwards towards the ceiling along with the locking block. Now, using two of those four screws, we're ready to fasten the side bow to the header assembly. Line up the pre-drilled holes in the side bow with the holes in the header, and then drive that screw all the way in. Repeat this on the other side of the vehicle. Now that we've got these two screws installed, we're ready to flip the header over and install two more screws from the other side. This is an important step, and it's very easy to forget. Here we'll take those other two screws and drive them into the back side of the header and side bow. Again, 
line up the pre-drilled holes with the holes in the header. Now don't forget to install the two screws on the other side. Now that you've installed those two screws on the back side of the header, flip the assembly over and we'll replace those two screws that you removed earlier. When replacing these two screws, it's important to get it through both the cable flag and the protective flap. You can then drive the screw all the way in. Repeat installing both screws on the other side. Once you've got the side bows installed into the header assembly, it's time to put on the foam seal kit on the lower header. Peel the foam from the backing. When installing these foam seals, orient the seal so that the cutout on the bottom goes around the side bow and this notch on this end goes around the tab on the lower header. Install the seal this way on both sides. There's one more seal to install on each side of the deck header assembly. This foam strip works as a seal for the front of the deck header assembly, and it goes right across the front like this. You can see that I've installed the foam tape right against the edge of the header here as an alignment mark and put it straight across the front. Repeat on both sides. It's time to mount the number three bow. You'll install the bow so that it's facing towards the front of the vehicle this way and set it into place. Install the bow onto the bow mount brackets using the quick release pivot knuckles by pulling the pin and sliding them into place. Repeat that on both sides. With the number three bow installed on the vehicle, it's time to install the bow stop block. Take the block and slide it between the two tabs on the number three bow. Make sure that you install it so that the block is more or less vertical and not slanted backwards like this. Once the block is installed between the two tabs, fasten it into place with one screw on each side in the upper hole on the tab. Both blocks are the same, but make sure to do both sides. Now this is one place that the two doors differ from the four doors. There isn't a three and four bow assembly like this on the two door. There's only a three bow assembly. Please refer to your instruction sheets for the proper procedure. Once the lock blocks are installed, it's time to install the number four bow. To install it, place it onto the vehicle so that it's upside down. It may look wrong, but once it's flipped back into place, it'll be clear that it's the right way. Install into the three bow using the two quick release pivot knuckles, one on each side. With both knuckles installed, flip the number four bow back into its final position.
Once you have your number three and four bow assemblies installed, it's time to install the side bows and header deck assembly onto the vehicle. Since this is such a large piece, it's a good idea to grab a friend if you've got one around. Lift the header deck assembly and side bows up over the front of the vehicle, over the windshield, and set into place over the front arch bow. Pull the fabric towards the front of the vehicle and over the hood so that it's out of the way. It's time to install the side bows into the number three bow. To do that, you need to align this tab with the knuckle on the side bow. Slide the tab into the knuckle. To fasten the side bow to the number three bow, use a T30 Torx bit and one of these two shoulder screws. The screw installs from the inside of the vehicle towards the outside. Repeat this on the other side. Once the side bow is installed into the number three bow, it's time to install the two bow to the side bows. Make sure that you have the curved section of the two bow pointed towards the front of the vehicle and the stay pads towards the vehicle rear. To install the two bow onto the rear of the side bow, you'll need two small plastic bushings, one M5 screw, there's a long one and a short one, the long one goes in the rear, and an M5 lock nut. Place one bushing on either side of the tubo into the hole, small side first. Align the holes with the tubo and the side bow, and insert a screw through all of the bushings and bows. Secure into place with a lock nut. Be careful not to over tighten the screw as this could damage the bushings. To install the front section of the two bow, repeat the install procedure used on the rear section. The front section uses the shorter of the two M5 screws. Once you have the two bow installed, make sure that you lock the side bows into place on the door rails. Lift the side rail up slightly, push down on the locking block tab, drop the side rail in and release the tab. Now that you've got all the bows installed, it's time to bring the fabric back over the vehicle. Be careful with the cable spring so that you don't damage your paint. Be sure to grab the stay pad on your way by. We're gonna need to access the three bow, so flip the fabric forward so that it's out of the way. To 
make sure that our stay pad doesn't have too much tension on it when we're trying to install it to the three and the four bow, we're going to flip the header back into the Sunrider position. This leaves the stay pad loose so that we can install it where it needs to be. The stay pad fastens to the number three and the four bows with two screws at the three bow and three screws at the four bow. If you look at the stay pad, you'll see that these holes have already been marked for you. The stay pad fastens at this hole and this hole on the three bow. Use two of the washer head screws in the small, part, in the small parts kit to fasten the stay pad to the three bow. Repeat this process with the three holes at the number four bow. You may find it's easier to unlock the four bow from the plastic lock block. Repeat these same five screws on the other side. Next, we'll be installing the cable guide pocket. With the top folded back to make sure that there's no tension on the cable and that we can move it around a little bit, feed the cable and spring assembly through the cable guide. Pull it out the other side. Insert the spring onto the end plate of the number three bow in the bottom most hole like this with the open end of the spring facing towards the inside of the vehicle. Once the spring is installed, take a vice grips or pliers of some other kind and crimp the cable into place so that it's harder for it to fall off. Slide the cable guide back over the cable spring assembly and install the two screws required to hold it on. There's an M3 screw, an M3 washer, and a lock nut. Make sure that the washer goes on the outside of the cable pocket. Repeat for the second screw. Use your screwdriver and adjustable wrench to tighten the M3 screws. Repeat on each side of the vehicle. Once the cable springs and cable spring guides are attached to the number three bow, we need to flip the header forward again and just let it rest under spring tension. 
Once the header has been flipped forward from the inside of the vehicle, find the number three bow. There's a flap that wraps around the bow and fastens to itself with hook and loop. It's easiest to do this from inside the back seat. Once the three bow flap is attached to the three bow, it's time to screw the number four bow flap into the four bow. To do that, you're going to need to flip the fabric and the number four bow forward and find the eight holes in the number four bow. If you look closely at the flap, you'll see that there are eight matching holes pre-drilled into the fabric. Align these holes with the holes on the bow and put a screw through each. Repeat this for all eight holes on both sides of the vehicle. Once all eight screws have been installed, flip the four bow back to its locked position. Just like with the number three bow, we'll need to wrap a bow flap with hook and loop around the number two bow. Again, you'll find this is easier to do from inside the vehicle. Before we can install the windows, we need to install the tailgate bar retainer clips. Uh, there are two of these, one for each side of the vehicle, and you can tell them apart by looking at the back side here where there's a snap. This snap goes towards the outside of the vehicle. To install the clip onto the vehicle, take this hook surface and hook it inside the vehicle body. Pull down and out until the clip snaps into place. Now we're finally ready to install the windows. So the windows are handed left and right, and you'll be able to tell which side is which by looking at where the slant of the window is. This slant goes towards the rear of the vehicle. You'll install the window by sliding this channel, this round channel, onto and over this piece here on the deck. Once you've done that, you'll locate the pin on the upper part of the window and insert it into the grommet on the number four bow. After inserting the pin at the top of the window, locate the snap at the bottom of the window and attach it to the back side of the tailgate bar clip. Once you've snapped the strap into place at the bottom of the window, insert the lower retainer into the body rail. Work your way around to the front of the vehicle. After installing the lower retainer, install the vertical retainer into the door rail. Make sure you have enough fabric to wrap the vertical retainer all the way around the rail so that there's 180 degrees of wrap.
After you've installed the windows on both sides, it's time to install the rear curtain. The rear curtain installs the same way as the windows with a slide on top. Once the rear curtain is hanging from the deck, install the tailgate bar to the bottom of the rear curtain. Make sure the bulb of the seal is facing towards the rear of the vehicle. Once you've slid the tailgate bar into place on the rear curtain, insert the tailgate bar into the tailgate bar clips and fold down into place. Finally, to install the rear curtain onto the quarter window, Insert the retainer into the J-hook on the side. Fold the retainer over and it will snap into place. Once all three windows are installed to each other and to the deck, make sure that this flap at the top of the quarter panel is folded underneath the deck. Pull the corner of the deck down, fasten it in place with the hook and loop. Close the top by moving the sun visors out of the way and pulling down on the header. To make sure that the header is secured down and the top closed, open the latch fully hook the latch around the footman loop and close the latch. Now that you've installed it, let's walk through how to operate it. Let's start by removing the quarter windows. To do that, we'll have to flip open the fabric flap at the top and open the tailgate. And unsnap the window from the tailgate retainer. Push the retainers on the quarter window and the rear curtain towards each other so that they will release. Separate the retainers all the way up. After separating the retainers at the quarter window and the rear curtain, use the finger loop at the bottom of the rear quarter window to remove the lower retainer from the body rail. Continue all the way around the bottom up until the door. Open the door and remove the vertical retainer from the door rail. To finish removing the window, pull the pin out of the grommeted hole at the top of the number four bow. And then the window just glides right out of the back. Repeat on the other side of the vehicle. To remove the rear window, grab the tailgate bar, pull it out of the tailgate bar retainers, and slide everything out of the driver's side. Once all three windows are removed, the Trek Top NX Glide transforms into a full-length bikini top. It's great for keeping the sun off of you and your passengers in the summer. Now let's take a minute to talk about the Sunrider feature on this Trek Top NX Glide. This can be done with the windows either in or out. Because this is a four-door, it opens all the way to the rear sport bar, which allows you and your rear seat passengers to get a full open air experience. To open the top end of the Sunrider mode, you'll want to be sitting in the front seat with the vehicle stopped. To open the top, move the sun visors out of the way so that you access the latches on the header. Open both latches and move the hooks out of the way so that they won't catch on the loops when you open the header. Push up in the center and let the header go out of the way. Once you've released both latches and pushed the header up, it's time to flip the header back into the Sunrider position. You don't need a friend to do this, 
but it does make it quicker. Fold the fabric back out of the way as you go so that it stacks up nicely on the rear sport bar. Be careful with your fingers, there are some pinch points. With the fabric stacked up on top of the rear sports bar like this, your rear seat passengers get to enjoy the sun too. From the Sunrider position, there's only a couple of steps left until you have a fully converted top. First, open the tailgate so your spare tire is out of the way. After you've opened the tailgate, swing the number four bow up towards the rest of the stacked up bows so that it doesn't hit anything when you swing the rest of the top down. Here's where we take the top all the way down. You can probably do this by yourself, but I highly recommend doing this with a friend. Unlock the side bow from the door rail by pushing down on this latch and moving the side bow up out of the way. Make sure you release the latches on both sides before you swing the top down. Grab onto the side bow towards the locking block and onto the rest of the bow stack at the end of the three bow. Swing everything towards the rear of the vehicle and let it fall down into the body tub. The last step is to close the tailgate. Lift the fabric up to make sure it doesn't accidentally get pinched. Swing the tailgate closed. To put the top back up from the down position, you'll first start by opening the tailgate so that the top can swing up freely. With your friend, lift the side bows up and push up on the three bow. Lock the side bows into place on the door rails using those locking blocks. After locking the side bow in place, flip the header forward. Again, be careful to not pinch your fingers. After pushing the header down, flip the forward bow down into its locked position. Fold the flaps down to complete the bikini look. 